Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here at Jitex 2024. I'm at the Extreme Network stand. Uh, it's hot in Dubai, <laughs> and I'm with uh, Mark Delavelle, your uh, SVP of uh, Systems Engineering. Sending, yeah, for uh, for Extreme. Yeah, good to and, see you, Zia. Uh, yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. It is hot in Dubai. Yeah, and uh, I love this event, Me right? Too. Because it's always been about, uh, among all the other trade shows I go to, Jitex has always been about the art of the possible. Yes. And uh, the theme for the event is obviously AI, when yep. we talk about the art of the possible. And uh, AI has had a pretty profound impact on networking. Um, I know a lot of companies are looking at it today. Uh, in fact, uh, you and I were just talking one of my, my uh, in one of my recent surveys, uh, the majority of companies believe the network's more important to the yep. business, but it's also more complex, so they're looking for AI to help solve that. And so, uh, what are customers telling you with AI right now? You know, so the, I believe this is one of the most transformative times that we're living in. Uh, so it's a conversation now with every customer. They want to understand where you are. It, it started a while ago with AI ops, right? So how do I take machine learning and AI and improve the operations of my network? But now we're into generative AI. Gener so we're at a point where the journey from AI is beginning from where we were with just a dashboard that kind of gave you insights to now a real interactive tool. Yeah, and so talk about that, because when you think of generative AI, people think of ChatGPT, I'm creating yep. pictures, right? The, the term generative means I'm generating something. Yes. Right, and so what's the intersection of generative AI and AI ops? So when you look at a network, and this gets back to the value, the business value of the network, the network represents data. So as the people connect to the network, as people move in the network, as you look at the networking devices as sensors, they fill a big data lake. So the first step was, well, how do I organize that data? How do I represent it? How do I give it to an operations person that they can make better decisions, proactive insights? Now, if I take a large language model, and let's say at Extreme, we have thousands of documents that talk about our products. We have GTAC cases, we have best practices. And we put that all into a large language model, which becomes generative. I now have the ability to interact. So phase one is how do I interact with the data? Yeah. Uh, and how do I understand about extreme? I may want to know about a switch. I may just, want to- Just ask a question. Ask a question. Why is this not performing well? Or like how do I configure this switch oh, yeah, to yeah. do this particular thing? And I'll get an answer. Because it will go search and build the answer. And now I can have a conversation that builds on itself. I, I thought the response was, have a really expensive network engineer. Well, you know, that from a systems engineering perspective, yeah, yeah. we will always be there for yeah. you. So, but I think the more important thing is like, I may be interacting with the tool and English may not be my natural or first language. You got it, right. So I may say, can you show me that in my language? I, I could be a German speaking uh, individual. That's, that's my first language. English is my second language. And I can have the document translated in real time into German. But again, it's iterative so I can have a conversation and keep adding to that conversation. That's phase one, right? So that's the first step when you think about generative AI, I want to be able to inter interact with all the documents that we've ever written on anything extreme. So a really valuable knowledge base that's interactive. Now the exciting thing about what we're showing here with AI Expert is that now this tool interacts with the network and you can ask the network directly questions about your environment. All right, and uh, so what kind of things might you ask? So I may want to know about performance of an application. How is Zoom performing today? Are there any problems with Zoom? This is a simple view of what is, what's the distribution of devices in my network, connected, managed, and how do I want it presented to me? Do I want it in a bar chart? Do I want it in a pie chart? In this case, we asked for a pie chart. But again, interacting with the network where you can ask a question to help simplify operations. Yeah. I want to know what's happening now. I may have to report to the CIO about performance in the network, what was the performance like yesterday during the conference call in the network? And it's, it's interesting, because that question you asked, as a former network engineer, I can vouch for this, the, the question of why is Zoom not performing is such a difficult question to answer. You got it. You know, it could be Wi-Fi issue, there could be a bad cable, there could, I mean, the, there's literally a hundred different things it could be. Yes. And the, the old way of troubleshooting that is you check every one of those. Right? That's right. Yeah. And, and think about think about the interaction. What's the performance of Zoom in the network? I'll get an answer. What was the biggest consumer of Zoom in the network? I'll get an answer. Yeah. What was the the, the worst client health 
in the network at the time of the conference. I'll get an answer. So again, it's interactive and it can all be around the same topic. And I'll build on the data that I ask. Yeah. So very powerful tool set. I think when we look at the complexity we have in networking today, having an assistant that can help you understand what's happening in real time is going to be invaluable for our customers. Yeah, and I, and I believe it will be because that sort of interesting juxtaposition of data that I mentioned of network importance versus network complexity, yeah. that trend has been happening for years, we've never yep. reversed it, right? Yeah. And so I think somehow, as the network's gotten more important, we need to find a way to simplify it. Yep. And it seems like AI's the really been the missing missing ingredient to do that. Yeah. I totally agree. And I think um, in our personal lives, we not only have a business tool like AI expert, but we'll have a personal assistant yeah. that's going to be an AI expert as well. So I think this is going to be with us for a long time, and right. I'm really excited about it. And so you talked about AI ops, you talked yeah. about generative AI. Uh, for the networking, what's next in AI for networking? Yeah, so so think about the journey, right? So we just we just asked the network some questions, and we got some reporting, we got some answers. But what if AI can start to be predictive and start to uh, ask you if you want to optimize certain areas of the network, or present an alternative to you, or to share with you where some of the challenges are that you may want automated in the network? So AI moves towards this uh, this self-healing, self-optimizing. Uh, self-constructing environment. Now, of course, you got to trust it. Yes. Right? So, so the a little idea, bit of prove it there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it starts with recommendations. Yeah. Um, do you want me to make this change? No, not yet. Uh, do you want me to make this change? No, not yet. Uh, this is the third time this has happened. Do you want me to make this change? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> yeah. But ask me again, right? So I think that's where we see AI going. Is it's going to become more of a proactive tool. Now, obviously, we have to trust it before we allow it to yeah. start making changes in our environment. Uh, but there will be things that will just be obvious to us that, yeah, that makes sense, let's get that done, let's let AI do that for us. So simplifying our workloads. All right, well thanks for the uh, little primer on AI there. Now I did notice over uh, yeah. in your stand, you've also got a big uh, Liverpool. A football, yeah, uh, yeah. or soccer for you Americans yeah, out yeah, there, yeah. soccer ball. I'm uh, American, so it's a football. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> uh, so you have a partnership with Liverpool, tell me about that. Yeah, so, so um, we've built out the solution in the stadium, and I think it starts with two parts. One is, having a good fan experience with the best connectivity, best optimized network, because when you put you know, 100,000 people <laughs> in a stadium, Wi-Fi has to work, right? So yeah. foundationally, we start with good design, good RF, good networking infrastructure. But really, this all started with data, right? So what is the fan experience? Where are people moving? Where are they do what are they doing while they're at the stadium? Providing a better experience when you're at the stadium, and that's part of the partnership. How do they provide a better fan experience through the network and how do they use that data for business analytics? Yeah, now uh, Liverpool Football Club, or LFC as they're known, plays at Anfield Stadium. Yep. Uh, I know you're also in uh, Old Trafford, where Manchester plays. Yeah. You're in uh, Olympic Stadium. Yeah. You're in uh, LA Memorial, Lambeau Field, Fenway Park, Wrigley. So It's a market all, we do very well. All the yeah. old iconic stadiums yeah, yeah. were never designed for Wi-Fi. Yep. Is it just a coincidence you think you're in those, or is there some reason that these kind of iconic stadiums use extreme. So let me let me just say that we started with sports and entertainment with data first. It was analytics yeah. that, that started the, the journey. Uh, but we built core expertise on how to optimize um, RF in those environments. Because it's, it's always challenging when you go into a historic venue. When and filled have, with concrete and yeah, steel. And so and, yeah. Where do you place the APN? If you've ever gone to some of these stadiums, you may look under the seat and you may find an access point that you're sitting on because yeah. that may be the best place for the RF to propagate into yeah. the section or the area where the... Where the, the guy asked Brian Shield at Fenway Park if they looked into a handrail deployments there and he laughed. He said, yeah. you can't put handrails in Fen yeah. APs in Fenway Park, right? Well, that's so, just it. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, and, and in some cases you can shoot down yeah. overhead with directional antennas, but primarily being close to where the people are, being close to where their devices are, is sometimes the better optimized uh, deployment model. And we have a team of experts that that's all they focus on. Yeah, now, well, congratulations on that win. Now, I know inside the soccer ball or yeah, football, yeah. Uh, you're doing a little demo in there of the oh, State yeah, of the I Future. I can show you that. You want to yeah. go over there? Yeah, now? let's go take a look. Okay. All right, well, we're, we're inside the big uh, we're football in, we're now, which is kind of fun. The ball. Yeah, and you're, uh, what, are you, what are you showing here? So, remember, I mentioned, you know, with generative AI, a lot of it's dynamic interaction. Uh, but we started many years ago in sports and entertainment, providing business analytics. Uh, so this is just an example of our business insight tool. So something that happens when there's an event at a stadium, 
where we collect data. So this is a simple illustration of what are your peak food sales or what are the peak merchandising sales at any given point. Oh. And I can plot that across a line and look at a time at the stadium based on bandwidth and based on usage, and I can actually correlate that data. So you're actually telling the stadium that their peak food sales was at 1730. Correct. And I can look and figure out what else happened at that moment. Exactly right. Yeah. So and so, so this analytics, it becomes comparative, right? So if you think about what we do for the NFL, um, on a Sunday, there are games across the country, and now you can look at total um, you know, events from an analytics perspective. I can go down to individual stadiums. I can compare stadiums, one versus the other. I could look at things like uh, venues and what's happening from a peak uh, food sales perspective, but also where are people going? What are they doing? What are they accessing in the network? What are the, what are the hot spots that they're connecting to? So if the NFL wants to attract a new advertiser, they can say, hey, you know, a lot of people are spending time in the stadium yeah. going to your website, and so it would make sense that you do something to kind of invest in marketing here. Yeah, that's great for partnership perspectives. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. What this really shows to me is the tie-in between network data and business outcomes. And I think historically, you know what, I'm not so sure people really understood how to connect those dots, but what you've done here is you've connected the dots for them, so they now no longer have to do that correlation manually. You know, and, and I think the business and the investment in the business and how you tie data to the outcome is 100% on, on, on target. All right. Well, I certainly appreciate the time. Appreciate the uh, uh, update on what you're doing with AI and what you're doing with all the sports leagues. I think this is a, uh, every major organization I talk to now is trying to figure this out, how to make current network data into money. Yeah. So, I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So on behalf of Mark Delaval from uh, Extreme Networks, I'm Zia Scaraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast. Thank you, Zia. Thanks.